Hey, this is Chris Hansen. I'm one of our senior technical consultants here at E1 Solutions. And today we're going to look at using translation tables and translations within Smart Connect. Now, they've been around for a while. We've recently made some changes to them to add a little bit more functionality within one. So we're going to look at why you would need to use a translation rather than just map a field directly inside of your map setup window. In my case, I'm just grabbing some customer data. And if I hit preview on here, the field that we're going to be looking at using a translation for is our on hold field. Now, when you're mapping this to GP, if you look at the eConnect reference to, to see what type of data it wants on there, it's looking for an integer or for a bit. So it wants a 0 or a 1 to say whether it's on hold or not. In our case, in our source file, we've got the word yes or no. So if we try to map this directly through, we're going to end up with an error because you obviously can't pass through a string value into an integer field. So to use our translation, I'm going to open up the node that we're going to need it for, which is our create update customer node. And I can see our hold status is listed in here. Now instead of directly mapping on hold across to that, we're going to go to our additional columns. And we're going to add a new column type called the translation column. So there's two parts to this. One is the actual translation that we're going to have in our map here. And the second part is the actual translation table which is going to be doing the work for us. It's going to take our data and modify that uh, and give us the output that we need. So I'm going to hit the plus sign to build a new translation table um, first thing because I'm going to assume we don't have one yet. So I'm just going to call this hold table on here. I'm going to give it our description that we need be whatever you want, it's just for your reference later on. And then the way this translation table is going to work is we're going to add different rows to it and we've got our from column and our to column and it quite simply takes whatever data is in the from column and it will translate it to the to side of that um, if it finds a match. So I'm going to put the word yes will go to a 1, the word no will go to a 0, and I know these values as I looked them up in the actual eConnect schema guide so I could see what eConnect wanted for each of the um, possible values we put in. So 1 would be on hold, 0 would be not on hold. I can actually add more values in here, so if I'm not sure what the customer might give me, they might give me a true or a false value as well. I could also say true goes to 1, false goes to 0. So you can have more than one value match to a particular output. So once we have that set up, we can go ahead and save this table and we can use it within our map. The other things you can do in here is you can also hit this import button what that will allow you to do is import your data from an Excel sheet. So if you've got an Excel sheet that's got a from column and a to column on it, it would dump all the data in each of those columns into um, our translation table setup on here. That's helpful if you've got a large amount of data that you want to enter and you don't, have to, don't want to key it all in again. And the other thing we can do in that setup window, or one thing that applies to that, is that translation table is not specific to this one map. This table can be used by as many maps as you want. So if it's a fairly generic thing, like my hold status option, I can go ahead and use this in two, three, as many maps as I want. And it's gonna, anytime I make a change to that translation table, it's gonna roll down those changes in every map that it's referenced within. Now, back to our specific map, I'm going to just name this field Hold Translation. That will be the name that I see on the left when I go ahead and save this. The lookup column will be the actual column that we're doing the translation on, so that will be our on hold field. The translation table, I'll use my table I just built there. Otherwise, if I already had a table set up, in this case I did have one that did the same thing, I could have used that instead. And then finally, you get to tell what action it should take if it doesn't find a match within our translation table. So if your source data doesn't match anything in there, you can have it return an error, so it would actually fail that particular record. You could have it return the source data that you originally passed in, a blank value, or you can set up a default if it doesn't match. So in my case, I'm just going to return blank if it doesn't find a match, so I'll let GP take its default action if I have no valid data to pass through. And once I hit OK, that will add it on here. And when I hit OK on the second window, we've now got our translation set up within this map. And I can just drag and drop that over to the field I want to use it for. So that's all there is to translations and translation tables. Hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions, you can hop on our forums or email our services or support team at E1. Thank you.